Precision Measurement for Machinists, a Master Task Multimedia Program. Lesson 10, the Coordinate Measuring Machine. This is a Coordinate Measuring Machine, or CMM. The purpose of a Coordinate Measuring Machine is to accurately measure workpiece features in any of the three axes, X, Y, and Z. The use of the machine makes it faster and easier to make measurements that might be done on a surface plate with conventional open setup techniques. There will be four parts to this lesson. In part one, you will learn about the basic components of a CMM. In part two, you will learn how the CMM is prepared for measurement. The alignment of the grid system is explained in part three. Part four explains how to perform some common measurements on a CMM. Part one the basic components of a CMM. This type of CMM is often referred to as a shop CMM. Other CMMs are located in temperature controlled clean rooms. While a shop CMM is manually operated, larger CMMs have motorized control over the axis movements which are then controlled by a computer program. These machines often have other features not covered in this lesson. Using a shop CMM can eliminate the need to use many other measuring instruments. It can also more accurately determine feature locations from surface datums. Most shop CMMs include a surface plate for mounting workpieces to be measured. Over the surface plate is the bridge. The bridge can move back and forth as the y-axis of travel. Mounted on the bridge is the probe column. Movements of the probe column back and forth across the bridge are movements in the x-axis. Movements of the probe column up and down are movements in the z-axis. All axes of movement are on guideways. On this CMM, the probe column and bridge do not actually touch the guideways during normal movement. An air compressor supplies filtered air to allow the moving surfaces to ride on a layer of pressurized air. This is called an air bearing. These are the axis control switches. When an axis switch is on, a brake is removed from that axis, allowing movement. When the switch is off, the brake is applied and the axis will not move. On this CMM, the bridge and column are moved by hand to bring them in proximity to the workpiece surface. The probe can be touched off manually or fine adjustments can be done with the manual axis controls. First, the axis control switches are turned off. Then turning an axis knob will move the probe in either the plus or minus direction in that axis. Because the air bearing provides only two ten thousandths of an inch of bearing clearance, it is important to keep the ways and the air supply clean and dry. This CMM has been placed in a plastic housing to help reduce contamination from dust and dirt in the shop. This is the probe. The probe and probe tip can be adjusted to measure various part features. The probe tip can be replaced if a different diameter tip is required for the feature being measured or if a tip becomes damaged. This probe is attached to an indexable head. This head allows the angle of the probe to be adjusted. As the head is adjusted, the angle is indicated on the LCD display on the face of the head housing. This CMM has a computer connected to it. As the probe is moved, the coordinates of the probe tip are displayed by the computer. The computer is a normal PC which is using special software designed for use with this CMM and probe. The software includes a series of measuring procedures indicated by icons on the screen. Once a procedure is selected by clicking on an icon, the software will prompt the operator to perform each step required to complete the measurement procedure. The computer will then store all the measurements and calculate various values when needed. The measurement procedure used for a particular workpiece can be stored in memory so it can be recalled and used again. This CMM has a total tolerance range of 78 millionths of an inch. Be sure the tolerances required of the workpiece feature match the tolerance limits of the CMM you are using. Part 2. Preparing for measurement. If power to the CMM has been turned off, it will be necessary to home the machine after power is turned on. Refer to the operator's manual for your machine to learn how to home your CMM. The surface plate has holes with threaded inserts for placing mounting clamping devices. This is the qualification sphere. It is a three-quarters of an inch in diameter, precisely manufactured sphere. 
It is secured to the surface plate and used as a reference device to qualify the CMM and the probe being used before measurements begin. Before mounting the workpiece, be sure to clean the surface plate with the proper cleaning material. If the workpiece is going to be placed on the surface plate, the surface of the piece should be stoned to remove any burrs. Then wipe the surface clean. Locate the piece on the surface plate near the threaded hole to be used for clamping. Be sure the qualification sphere is far enough away to eliminate any possible interference during the measurement. If necessary, move the sphere to another location. Try to align the major axis of the workpiece with a major axis of movement of the CMM. In this example, the major axis of the part is aligned with the x-axis of the CMM. Place a clamp and set its height to the proper level to hold the workpiece firmly down against the surface plate. Snug the clamp with the proper wrench. It is important to understand how the coordinate grid systems work before using a CMM. The CMM itself has a coordinate grid made up of the three axes, X, Y, and Z. This will be referred to as the machine coordinate grid. The origin or zero point for this grid is located somewhere in the space within which the probe can be moved. When moving the probe, the display on the computer monitor will indicate the coordinates within the machine coordinate grid. The workpiece will also have one or more coordinate grids as indicated on the print. The origin of a workpiece grid would be established by the intersection of a set of three datums. For example, the intersection of datums A, B, and D is used to define the location of these four holes. Therefore, the intersection of datums A, B, and D is a zero point from which these features are measured. As long as the origin point of the CMM is aligned with the origin of these datums, the dimensions on the part print for these holes can be compared to the dimensions read on the CMM. Notice that other features on the part have a different origin point. If the position of this hole and slot are measured, datums A, B, and C are used. Datum D is not used. Therefore, it is important to have the CMM's machine coordinate grid aligned with the correct workpiece coordinate grid before making any measurements. This process is called alignments in this model CMM and will be demonstrated later in this lesson. The feature dimensions being checked may require the tip of the probe to be changed. The diameter of the probe tip should be no larger than half of the smallest diameter to be checked. For example, if the smallest diameter being measured is 2 millimeters, the tip should be no larger than 1 millimeter. A special tip wrench is available. Place the wrench in the hole in the tip. Then loosen and unthread the old tip. Thread the new tip into place and tighten with the tip wrench. Once the new probe is installed, the new tip must be qualified. Qualifying will let the computer know the diameter of the tip so that all measured values can be compensated. To begin, use the mouse to move the arrow over the qualification icon. The icon highlights to indicate it will be selected when clicked. The qualification page is displayed. The screen offers a choice of single tip or a multi tip. Since this probe has only one tip, single tip is selected. Multi tip can be used with indexable head probes. An indexable head can be turned at various angles to allow probing of all the workpiece features. If several probe positions will be necessary during a measurement, the additional head positions can be qualified by selecting the multi tip selection. The screen displays the procedure for completing the qualification. In step one, the sphere must be measured. To perform this accurately, the software recommends a minimum of four points be measured when checking a sphere. To the right, it indicates that zero current hits have been entered at this time. For this CMM, a minimum of nine points must be read on the qualifying sphere. These points include the top of the sphere, four points around the equator, and four points halfway between the equator and the top. To begin, unlock the axes by placing the axes control switches to on. The probe is brought down to one side at the equator. Move the probe in a straight line by moving on only one axis toward the sphere until it touches. Each time the probe tip deflects enough to take a reading, a tone can be heard. Remove the tip by moving in the same straight line direction. This will ensure the amount of probe movement is exactly the same when entering and exiting the measurement point. 
On the computer screen, one hit has been registered. Additional hits are performed on the remaining three sides of the sphere using the same procedure. If a hit is made at a wrong location, it can be removed from the computer. At the bottom of the screen, a listing of other menu options is shown. Clicking on Clear Hit removes the last value entered into the computer. The ninth and last hit is at the top of the sphere. After the last hit, the Done selection on the screen is highlighted. Clicking Done causes the computer to calculate the probe tip diameter. The display will show the calculated dimensions of the probe tip as well as the standard deviation for the measurements taken. Standard deviation is a measure of the variation that occurred across all of the measurements taken. For most measurements, a standard deviation of less than one thousandth is desired. If a standard deviation of more than one thousandth appears, millions of an inch. King Dunn now displays the main menu screen. This is the status line. Include letters that indicate the current status of the computer. The letter V on the status line indicates this EMM has been properly initialized. If the letter V is not present, refer to the operator's manual to reinitialize the system. The letter P on the status line indicates that the probe is active or on at this time. This is the step number. It indicates the current step in the measurement process. If the steps in the measurement sequence were to be saved in the computer for future use, this number would appear when this step is ready to be performed. Part 3. Aligning the Cord System During the process of measuring, the computer can be used to automatically name measured features. For example, if a plane is measured, it can be automatically named Plane 1 and stored in the computer for future reference. To remove the Plane 1 designation from a previously assigned plane, select Default from the menu selections in the upper left corner. The default screen will appear. At the top of the screen is a listing of files stored in the computer. The files are typically named for a part number and include all the steps required to measure the workpiece and sequence. Below that is a list of tasks that can be formed. This allows the operator to select an existing program sequence from the file list above by choosing Select, Create a New File, Delete a File, and so on. The Reuse selection will cause all of the default feature names, such as Plan 1, to be made available for this new workpiece. It effectively deletes the data stored under those names for the last workpiece measured and lets the names be reused. The letter A on the status line means the coordinate grid of the CMM is already aligned to some point. This means a previous alignment is still active in the computer and must be removed. To remove the previous alignment, click on the Alignments icon. Next, click on the Clear Alignment icon. The main menu display returned and the letter A has disappeared from the status line. Let's assume the true position of these four holes is to be measured. Because the feature control frame indicates that datums A, B, and D are used, each of the datum surfaces must be entered into the computer, allow the needed alignment of the origin of the CMM grid system to the origin established by the datums A, B, and D. The print establishes the A datum as the top surface of the workpiece. To establish this surface as reference plane of the CMM, the measurements icon is clicked. Now the plane icon is selected. As you will recall, a minimum of three points are required to establish a plane. Therefore, the computer asks for a minimum of three hits. To get standard deviation calculation performed by computer, however, it is necessary to complete one additional hit. Each of the four corners of the piece will be touched off. All points must be in the same date and plane indicated on the print. Be sure to move the probe only one axis during the measurement. Click Done after the hit or enter. The deviation is only five tenths and ninety millions, which is acceptable for this service. If the deviation were more than a thousandth, the service should be remeasured to make sure the surface is flat when tolerance. In the menu at bottom, click on Auto Name to store the value as Plane 1. The Plane 1 name and the values stored with it can now be recalled when the alignment is performed. The next item on this piece is B. According to the print, B is located along the edge of the workpiece and can be represented as a line. Select Measurement again. Now select 2D Line. Two hits are required as a minimum. Three hits will be performed to establish a standard deviation calculation. The probe is touched off against the front edge of the piece. Be sure to touch off at the origin point of the three axes first, then touch off at two other points along the axes. This sets the correct direction for the axis. Click Done and the values are stored. Check the standard deviation to be sure that it is less than one. To name the feature, click on Auto Name and the feature will be named Line 2D1. The third axis to be established is Datum D. Select Measurements again. Since Datum D is the center of a hole, circle selection is used. While three hits must be taken to locate the hole center, Four are taken to get the standard deviation. Click Done to complete the calculation. After the hit are completed, check the deviation. Auto name the feature and it will be circle 1. Click Done to complete the process and return to the main menu screen.
To complete the alignment, the computer must be told to use these reference surfaces as the axes for the next set of measurements. This will align the zero point on the CMM with the zero point on the work piece, as specified by the print. That means that the dimensional values on the computer screen can be directly compared to the dimensional values on print, since they are measured from the same zero point. To complete the alignment, begin by selecting the alignment icon. Select free alignment, since they use the plane, line, and hole center being used in this example. If the features to be measured had an origin that used the intersections of dames C and B, the line to line intersect selection could have been used. If the dames were two circular features or two point features, then separate origin could be used. We'll need to learn which alignment mode to use for the type of dim features being used on your CMM. Once free alignment is selected, click on the Recall button at the bottom of the screen. A list appears that includes the stored Plane 1 values previously entered. Click on Plane 1. Now Plane 1 appears as the recalled feature. Then click Done. The computer now asks for a measure line. This requires the major axis centered at data B. Click Recall and select Line 2D1. Click Done. Then the computer asks for a point. This is the center point established by touching off inside the hole which represented datum B. Click Recall. Click on Circle 1. Then click Done. The origin of the grid system created by the intersection of datum A, B, and D has now been entered into the computer as the origin of the CMM's grid system. Part 4. Con Measurement Procedures With a grid line, the true position of these four holes can be measured.